All right. So Stratica over on Twitch just now asked the question, how many hours minimum would you recommend a new streamer play per day when starting out? The general consensus is like a minimum of three to four hours. Now I have a slightly different take on that. And that's because I did not start out as a streamer. I started out as a content creator who then transitioned into streaming. And I always used streaming as just something to do in between the content creation as a way to connect with my audience. So there are essentially two schools of thought behind this. The big, the big important rule of thumb is that the reality is if you want to, if you want to build up any kind of platform, whether it's as a content creator or as a streamer, the number one rule of thumb is you got to be everywhere. You got to be all the time. And you got to you got to worry about the cost of opportunity. Um, that's important, but it's really about saturation because there are so many people, especially in the post pandemic world that we live in. So many people that have gone on to Twitch and kick and YouTube and all these different platforms to try to become content creators and streamers and make a career out of it. Um, it goes beyond we had a great conversation about this a few nights ago about the importance of also being entertaining um, there is there is an aspect of that as well as um, what content you create what con what games you stream because if you stream shitty games no one's going to watch then you're never going to have an audience but also if you stream great games and you're a shitty presenter no one's going to want to watch so that factors in too. I think that was in the other video you actually mentioned earlier. I think that's probably the video we talked about that in. Um, if you approach it the way I approached it, I started off making content. So just uploading videos to YouTube. And over time, that audience just grew organically because I was producing videos. And I started off around just old school games that I really enjoyed, like Quest for Glory 1, 3, and 4. Um, betrayal for Cro betrayal at Crondor. Um, probably some other point and clicks. Oh, I never, I did, I did the dig. Uh, Gabriel Knight, Sins of the Father. Uh, I don't remember it anymore. A uh, Full Throttle, the remastered, <clears throat> the remastered version of Full Throttle. I was just doing old games that I grew up with when I was a kid. And then at some point, I went back and looked at this when I pre-ordered. Baldur's Gate 3, the day it became available for pre-order was like October whatever year it was. Like, three or four years ago. I only had like 80 followers on my channel. The the, the day I streamed not pre-order, but the day I streamed um, Baldur's Gate 3 Early Access the very first day that Baldur's Gate 3 Early Access became available, I only had like 80 some followers on my channel. Um, I started uh, I streamed that game um, a little bit and what I would do is like once in a while I would stream I would I would make content like two three times a week and then I would stream like once a week because I had other things I was doing and over time that audience just grew and then at some point I made a decision Chris has the timeline a little bit better than I do because I was off by about a year she says in I think she said it was um, in 20, like beginning of 2021, something like that. End of 2020, beginning of 2021, um, I decided to actually start taking my YouTube channel seriously. Um, yeah, it was end of 2020 and beginning of 2021 because I was ending the seven and a half years of production on the MMORPG and moving over into, hey, I've got, I could do my own thing. What do I want to do? And I was like, well, let's let's go do what I've been doing for clients over the last 15, 20 years. And let's go build my own YouTube channel out and everything. So I started uploading with more serious intent. And so I would do actual playthroughs and I would do guides around those games. Um, but I would still do old school games like Icewind Dale, Baldur's Gate one and two. I did, um, in there, I would splice in some new stuff. I did cyberpunk 2077. I did, um, Assassin's Creed, Ragnarok, Red Dead Redemption 2, God of War, 
Um, and I just started producing content around those games and streaming those games whenever they would be available. And what I eventually settled on was doing six to eight videos per day and streaming for two hours every single day. That was my schedule. To create six to eight videos a day was a pretty full day of work on top of two hours of streaming. That's like, for me, that was 12 to 14 hours a day of work to do all that. Um, and that really took my channel from um, nothing and I was able to grow it over the course of a year and got monetized. And then once I got monetized, I started to stream more frequently because once I was able to get monetized, you could add on YouTube anyway, you could add, um, you know, your super chats and memberships and all the ways that people can support you beyond just earning ad revenue. So that was the incentive to be live more frequently. And this is the incentive for any streamer to be live more frequently is not only are you earning ad revenue, but you're also earning revenue from on YouTube. It's going to be super chats, super thanks and memberships. And on Twitch, it's going to be bits, cheers and subscriptions. So the more you're live, the more revenue you earn from being live and the ad revenue for being live is greater than it is for for uploads so and the thing about twitch is that you can only earn money on twitch when you're live on youtube you can earn money even when you're offline because you've got videos that you've produced that are bringing in search engine traffic or youtube search traffic so that content is always going to be generating revenue so you could either um if i had to do it all over again knowing what i know now i would probably start i would have prioritized streaming um, more than I did in the early days because now what I do is a lot different than what I used to do. So the way I do it now is I used to stream just to interact with my community um, and as a nice tool to interact with everybody that was watching the videos that I was producing. Now I stream primarily because I'm also not only am I getting ad revenue and all the other stuff that pays my bills, uh, membership, super chats, subscriptions and stuff, but I can also cut that content down into various things. So as an example, this video right here that we're doing live, this is gonna get cut out and produced as a YouTube video because it was a great question and this is something that people will watch on YouTube. Also, we had that discussion earlier about toxic positivity. That's gonna get cut out and produced as a video. Earlier today, at the end of the uh, Starfield stream, I, I did the one, um, it's the most boring thing I've ever played meme video. So usually what I'll do now is when I go into a stream, I'll have a list of, of maybe two or three things that I want to get out of a stream, videos that I want to clip out. And usually that's enough, but occasionally someone will ask a question like this right here, which then gets jotted down in the notebook. We produce that, I timestamp it. When I finish the stream, I cut that out, throw it on YouTube, give it a thumbnail and release it. Um, so now I try to stay live um, up until Recently, my objective was um, three to four hours a day. Trying to go for four hours a day was the objective. But um, for me, I also have always had the monetary incentive of saying, I know how much money I make to upload videos on YouTube, and I have minimums that I need to hit to pay the bills. So in the past, it was always more profitable for me to make videos and upload them as opposed to being live because our audience is been growing steadily um, I'm almost we're two and a half years in we're a little over two and a half years in um, full-time um, not two and a half years into the YouTube channel two and a half years into being full-time on YouTube and then we added twitch in October of last year um, essentially because I, I've in the past been able to make more money from doing uploads I would always limit how many hours I was gonna stream per day because I needed to spend the rest of my time getting videos produced um, so I would, I would just say there's a hard cutoff at three hours unless there is more than X amount of people watching. Um, and in the past, that was, and even to this day, it's about 35 is about the minimum. There is an exception with World of Warcraft, and there's a reason for that. Um, World, World of Warcraft is an exception because it's a long-term thing for my channel, and I don't really stress too much about the traffic here or on the Lord of the Rings Online because these are older games that I play in between the other things that I'm doing. And so it's okay if the if the audience is a little lower. Like right now we're at like 
22 people between both. And if you go to the, the Starfield stream from earlier today, we were 75 to 85. There's a big difference between 75, 85 people watching and 25. You know, we're, we're probably averaging, we'll probably end up averaging 25. We usually average 25 to 30 on my World of Warcraft streams. Lord of the Rings Online is usually like 40 to 50. Um, just kind of depends on the night. Sometimes we'll go down to 20. Um, for where I'm at with my channel, I'm okay with that. And it still pays to be live. So, um, three hours is t traditionally was always my cutoff. But the last two months, I've had really good traffic around No Man's Sky, Starfield, um, Warhammer 40k, the New World Eternum open beta, um, pretty much every all the major all the new releases I've been playing Star Wars Outlaws. All the new releases I've been playing for the last, like, six weeks mixed in with No Man's Sky have been getting me a minimum of, like, 40 to 50 people watching the streams. And then usually, depending, like, it just depends. But, like, with No Man's Sky and Starfield, we've seen it go as high as, high as like, um, I know a couple of No Man's Sky streams when I got Kingmaker slot, I was at, like, 120 people. Um... And I've had Starfield hits, has hit Kingmaker a couple times on Twitch, and I've had, like, 90 people watching, 85, 90 people watching. Um, that's fine for me. I mean, it's it's where I'm at in that tier of, you know, I am not I don't have 150,000 followers on YouTube. I have 36,000, almost 37,000. So, you know, <clears throat> when I have 150,000 subscribers on YouTube and I have 10,000 on Twitch, yeah, I'm going to, I'm going to, my, my minimums will change, and I'll hopefully have at least 150 people live every time I'm live, a minimum of 150. Right now, it's, it still varies a little bit. But I would say you should shoot for a minimum of three. Um, three to four. But again, if you're trying to generate income, I would also look at content creation, because it definitely paid my bills um, for a while before I really started... This, really, the last two months are the only time I've ever focused on streaming more than a few hours per day. So I've been trying to do six to eight hours of streams for, like, s about six, eight weeks now. Um, and the numbers have been there for the streams, and I'm happy to do that. But I do have a minimum cutoff, usually, uh, which is if, if I have 35 viewers or less, I won't stream for more than two hours. Because I can make more money going offline and making a video, a guide whatever game I want to play I can make guides around those games and I can make more money than being live for two hours with 35 people watching so from a financial standpoint for me it makes more I could I can literally go sit down play a game for an hour make a video out of that upload it it's a two-hour process and I can make more money off of that video than I will from being live on stream for two hours with 35 viewers or less so for my time perspective I will only stream more than two hours if there's 35 viewers or more the exception being World of Warcraft because of the fact that we have a gaming community around World of Warcraft so I get a lot of long tail content and long tail views on my World of Warcraft um, content because we have a guild that we raid with on Saturday nights and people come watch those raid videos and they come watch the dungeon videos, and they come watch the guides and everything else. So it it makes it worthwhile for me to be live on World of Warcraft, even though I might not always hit the 35 minimums, because it pushes traffic to my guides and all the other videos that I'm doing, which is another aspect of streaming too, is that if you want to keep yourself relevant in the eyes of the algorithm, you know, playing a certain game will always make you more relevant for that moment in that game. So if you have guides around that game while you're streaming that game, Especially if you factor in, because uh, Twitch doesn't do this so much, but one of the reasons everybody will like stream on Twitch and then port everything out to YouTube is that YouTube has a very great algorithm where, I think you had mentioned this earlier, you found like one of my Lord of the Rings Online videos or something. Um, when you publish a video on YouTube, it will get recommended to other people based on things that they're watching, things that they like, their algorithm. And so it behooves you to produce youtube videos because that algorithm will always be searching for things that are related to the things that people are watching so if someone is watching rings of power 
and they want to find and, and, and as they're watching their Rings of Power video, if they like that Rings of Power video, YouTube says, oh, you liked Rings of Power. Here's 15 other videos on the right hand side or whatever that you might like that are also related to Rings of Power and maybe a few things that aren't directly related to Middle Earth and Tolkien, but are slightly related. And you'll see those videos and hopefully click on those videos and go watch them. And then also when you come to the end of a video, YouTube will often recommend other things as well. They'll like, you'll get to the end screen and it'll pop up like a list of like 15 or 20 videos. Like if you get to the end of watching a video on YouTube, like it'll have, if you just wait until it finishes, it'll pop up a screen that has like a whole bunch of recommendations for you. Um, so having lots of videos in YouTube is a good thing because your videos can end up in those lists. They might not, right? It does take time and effort, but here's, here's, here's how Chris and I, when we sat down and developed my content strategy, um, we had worked on a bunch of stuff for other clients over the years. So I already kind of knew a little bit going into this. But the easiest way to look at it is, is it this way. Um, I produce a shitload of videos. Not everybody does this. Um, let, let, let's say Mortissimal Gaming or Wolfheart or some of those guys. They might only produce one video a day, sometimes maybe only two or three videos a week. But they get, they're big content creators with 200,000 followers, right, on YouTube. So they'll get 150, 200,000 views on a video. I'm not there yet. So my strategy has always been I'm going to saturate so that my face is everywhere, all the time, in lots of different places about lots of different topics. So that no matter where someone is on YouTube or TikTok or Instagram or Facebook or X slash Twitter, I am going to be there. So what I've always done is looked at it this way. The algorithm on YouTube, which once it starts generating revenue, all of your videos, videos start generating revenue. So even if the videos are only generating a couple of cents per day of revenue, it might not, that might not sound like a lot, like two or three cents a day. If you have enough videos in the algorithm that are generating two or three cents a day, that amount starts accumulating and suddenly you're making $3 a day and then you're making $13 a day and then you're making $30 a day and then you're making $50 a day and then you're making $60 a day and then you're making $70 a day. And at a certain point, you'll get to a point where you'll have a minimum threshold that you will always be making as long as you continue to produce content. There is a need to feed the beast. Um, but, you know, I think like right now, I, I dive into this way more on YouTube into the member videos um, where we get into like the specifics of how much I'm making and, and the revenue drops and everything else. Um, but when I, when I got monetized at the time, when we first started two and a half years ago, it was like $3 a day is what I was making in ad revenue. And then since then, like right now off the top of my head, I think we are currently averaging. And again, this is the average and this is just YouTube. I'm not talking Twitch or, or the Patreon page or any of that other stuff. Um, I think we're around like 60, like 65 to 70. I would need to go crunch the numbers to be exactly sure. But um, the last couple of months we've been averaging with two streams a day, it's been averaging like 65, 70 bucks a day, somewhere in that ballpark. So that's not too bad. Um, and it's grown like this year. Um, I have made, I'm going to, I'm going to be vague about numbers in public because obviously I want to push people to subscribe. Um, I have made a low five figure increase this year compared to last year. So my in my income this year has increased in a low five figure range above last year's revenue across all platforms. And I could already ballpark where we're going to be by the end of the year. I can kind of already, I kind of already know what I'm going to make this year based on the numbers as they are right now. Now I could have explosive growth. I could not. It, we, we, we could, we could see that No Man's Sky and Starfield is a, is a peak, and then it could drop back down again, and I don't make any money in November and December. That could legitimately happen. 
But we also have a ton of new releases for the next few months. So factoring that in, you know. So that's the long-winded answer to your question is kind of you want to be as live as often as you can. But also it depends on your financial situation and what you're prioritizing. Um, are you prioritizing revenue? Are you prioritizing growth? Like, are you trying to get followers? What's your objective? Is it just a hobby? Are you trying to build a business? Do you want to become a streamer because you want to be famous? Do you want to make this a career path? Like, there are a lot of different ways to be a content creator slash streamer. Um, there's a ton of other information in there. But um, essentially, if you can, three to four hours a day would be a minimum. Try to go into it thinking about what can I cut out of this. At the very least, you could cut it into 30-minute episodes that become a Let's Play series on YouTube. Like, And that's the perfect moment to say, like, subscribe, hit the bell icon. So you never miss an update if you're following on YouTube and if you're on Twitch. Do all the follows and things that you need to do. Daily streams at 9 a.m. Mountain. And then on Saturday nights... I play World of Warcraft as well as Wednesday nights, and Monday nights we do Lotro.